Ginger and I moved to Boston about 30 years ago, before smartphones and GPS devices. Boston is notorious for, have, for not having street signs. People who live there give directions by landmarks, often a Dunkin' Donuts or a local liquor store chain called Cappy's Liquors. In fact, after a while, we decided good directions in Boston always had to begin with, you know where Cappy's Liquors is, right? I learned another thing about getting directions in Boston that I thought of reading this passage, and that is rarely were the directions of how to, how to get somewhere the same as the directions how to get back. The proliferation of one-way streets and then just the craziness of a city that kept adding on to itself meant most of the time we, like the wise ones, had to go home a different way than we had come. This past week, I spent a couple of days in Stonington, Connecticut on a personal retreat, a Christmas gift from Ginger and my mother-in-law, Rachel. The time was rich and restful and meaningful, but I mention it this morning because of what it felt like to drive those small roads lined with stone walls trying to find the Airbnb where I was staying. My iPhone narrated my travels, telling me where to turn. I was aware as I made turns down roads I hardly even knew were there, that without the app on my phone I would have gotten lost, or at least I would have had to ask for directions. And when I went to pick up my pizza that night, even Siri took me back to the cabin by a different route. As we tell the story of the travelers from the East, the Magi, the Sages, the Wanderers, the Astrologers, I'm mindful that they set out following a star. We don't know where they started from, but the implication seems to be they had come a long way in hopes of finding someone important. The Gospels say nothing about them being kings, or males for that matter, but perhaps we have inferred that over the years because they felt comfortable going to the palace to ask Herod for directions when they got to Jerusalem. Actually, the Gospel doesn't tell us why the sages felt compelled to go to Herod instead of trusting that the star would lead them. I've heard explanations that they were following political pleasantries or they thought one king would know about other royal births, perhaps, but none of that is in the text. Their visit appears to be the impetus for Herod's decision to massacre the Judean children to thwart any challenge to his power because he didn't, he didn't appear to know anything about the birth when they asked. But that's not what the travelers meant to set in motion. With the help of his scholars, Herod pointed them towards Bethlehem and the travelers went back to following the star and perhaps asking around town until they found the child. They offered their gifts and prepared to go home the way they came until, Matthew says, they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, which helped them see that they couldn't trust him, so they went home by another way. That sentence sounds so simple, doesn't it? They went home by another way. But we don't have any indication that the star made the return trip, nor do we have any sense that these people were necessarily well-traveled and, and knew how to find home easily. They just knew to head east, at least, and they knew not to stop by Herod's house. They couldn't simply retrace their steps. As we move from 2020 to 2021, I think it's fair to say we're all glad to leave last year behind. We spent the best part of it wandering in uncharted territory because of the pandemic. As we begin this new year with the promise of the vaccine and the hope that the pandemic will wind down, we are talking more and more about life getting back to normal. I have a list of things I miss doing. Among them, in eating in restaurants, hanging out with friends, singing hymns in church, going to church, going to concerts and plays, shaking hands, passing peace, hugging. But even as I offer that list, I want to say I hope we don't 
just go back to the way things were. For all that was difficult and tragic about 2020, I hope it gives us reason to act like the wise ones and go home by another way. Rather than reconstructing the life we knew before COVID-19, we have a chance to tear down things that need to be torn down, to leave behind behaviors that divide and discourage us on both personal and societal levels, and to do the work to find a better way to live together. More than once, or perhaps a hundred times, I've heard people refer to these days as unprecedented times, which is another way of saying we don't have any good directions on how to get out of here. And we certainly don't have a star to guide us. The pandemic and the political division in our country have left us feeling lost. But like the folks in, in the same way that the folks in Boston have Cappy's Liquors, we have sand, some landmarks of faith to help us find our way. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia, giving them directions on how to find their way to each other. He called them the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those are pretty good signposts for us as well gathering around the communion table, even though we can't see each other, is another landmark of faith. We come to the table to remember ourselves, to put ourselves back together in Jesus' name. It's not the same when we're sitting in different rooms, but it's still a way to find each other. The road ahead of us is a journey towards each other, and it is a road different from the ones we are used to traveling. We can't get there overnight any more than the Magi made it across the desert in a day or two. But the journey starts now, not when the pandemic is over. We need to be working on finding new ways to each other, even as the roads we know are blocked with obstacles. Alita Adams wrote a song in the 90s called Get Here, and the first verse said, You can reach me by railway, you can reach me by trailway, you can reach me on an airplane, you can reach me with your mind, you can reach me by caravan, cross the desert like an Arab man, I don't care how you get here, just get here if you can. Let's do whatever we can to get to one another. Call, write, Zoom, bake, walk, share, pray. Let's find a way to one another, even though it's not the path we know. We can find another way. Amen. <music> May I suggest, may I suggest to you, may I suggest this is the best part of your life, may I suggest this time is blessed for you, this time is blessed and shining almost blinding bright, just turn your head. And you'll begin to see the thousand reasons that were just beyond your sight. The reasons why, why I suggest to you, why I suggest this is the best part of your life. There is a world that's been addressed to you addressed to you, intended only for your eyes. Secret world, like a treasure chest to you, a private scenes and brilliant dreams that mesmerize. A lover's trusting smile, a tiny baby's hand, a 
million stars that fill the turning sky at night. Oh, I suggest, yes, I suggest to you, oh, I suggest this is the best part of your life. There is a hope that's been expressed in you. The hope of seven generations, maybe more. Then this is the faith, the faith that they invest in you. It's that you'll do one better than was done before. Inside your know. Inside you'll understand. Inside you'll know what's yours to finally get right. And I suggest, yes, I suggest to you, oh, I suggest this is the best part of your life. This is a song Come from the West to you Comes from the West Comes from the slowly setting sun With a request Yes, a request of you To see how very short These endless days will run And when they're gone And when the dark descends, oh, we give anything for one more hour of light. And I suggest this is the best part.